Well, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to this tutorial on applying a gate in Adobe Audition Creative Cloud, sometimes referred to as a noise gate. The whole purpose of a gate is to reduce the impact of noise between signals. Now, in recent tutorials, I've been through how to use a parametric equalizer to reduce the impact. And I've also been through using Audition's own noise reduction process which is an incredibly clever piece of kit, which actually did a far more effective job. Now, Gate works in tandem with these processes, particularly on a recording like this one. If you've watched any of the early recordings, you'll be already familiar with this little clip, and it's from my students from a few years ago, who struggled a little bit with this particular take. Their actor didn't turn up, so one of the media students stepped in, did the best job he could, he wasn't an actor, and they chose a pretty poor location for this recording. But what it has done is provided me with an example which is rather extreme in terms of noise. It presents a challenge, but it does show the process is working very effectively in Adobe Audition. So first of all, just have a little play and see what I've got here. You've heard it already. My apologies. Good. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and it got the others. Okay. So as you can probably hear from that, we have two significant bits of noise going on. First of all, I don't know if you can hear this section here will uh, demonstrate that when these uh, students set up and recorded, they recorded near a generator, which was whirring away in the background, making this kind of hum. <laughs> you can hear the note there. <laughs> I think that's some kind of crow in the background, making a squawk as well. Very post-apocalyptic. And this bit here has got the hum in it again, because the hum's constant all the way through, but it's also got something which is very common for when you're recording a location, particularly if you've not set your equipment up correctly, or if you've got a particularly windy day, you get this. That sound, which is wind rumble. Now, everyone's familiar with wind rumble. You've been out on your mobile phone in the wind and someone's trying to hear you, they can't hear what you're saying because of wind rumble. What's actually happening there is not so much the noise from the environment, it's actually the wind blowing into the microphone and moving the diaphragm and creating those noises. In both cases, both these bits of noise cover quite a broad bandwidth in what's known as the audio spectrum. All the frequencies from low frequencies to high frequencies make up the audio spectrum and they're covering pretty much across the board all the frequencies. But there are some significant detail in these bits of noise which does help with the following processes. First of all, the hum. It's got a note, and, that, and the wind is particularly dominant in the bass regions, up right down the bottom. It's called wind rumble for that reason. So previous tutorials, I showed how to use EQ by applying parametric EQ. I think that's an example. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. And that's reduced both the hum. The dog found us, and it got the others. And the rumble considerably. I'm not going to apply that. In another previous tutorial, I showed how to use the noise reduction tool by capturing a noise print. You select the audio. Then going back in and applying a noise reduction process based on its readings. There's the reading for that noise print. Apply, and you can see straight away the noise impact has been reduced considerably. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us. Okay, it has affected the dialogue slightly as well. It doesn't matter so much. It's exterior dialogue and dialogue outside does sound thinner and more dissipated anyway. What we need to do is try speaking in a room and then head outdoors and you'll hear your voice sounds thinner as the tones of your voice disappear into thin air. So I'm going to use this as a starting point for a gate. And I do recommend if you are gating, if you've got a recording, particularly as a noisy as this one, that you do these techniques first and try and reduce the impact. What I'm aiming for at this stage before applying the gate is to make sure the noise in between the signals is considerably less. So here's my signal, i.e. that's the sound you want to capture, and the noise, the sound I don't want to capture. The loudest bit of noise are these two peaks here. Generally, the dialogue is a lot stronger. It means I'm in a good position for a gate to work. So exactly how does a gate work? Well, it's pretty much as described on the tin. I imagine there's a gate shut. 
Now when the gate is shut, no sound gets through. And when the gate is open, all the sound gets through. So to dispel one myth, a noise gate does not get rid of noise, only blocks noise in between signals. But if you get your noise floor low enough in your recording, then you do get the illusion that the noise is gone because when the strong signal comes through, it kind of masks the noise. So that's what we're aiming for. So essentially, what causes the gate to open is the strength of the signal. So as soon as the signal is strong enough, it pushes the gate open and everything comes through. And as soon as that signal subsides again, drops off, and so the gate closes. All right. And we have certain controls to control how the gate opens and how the gate closes. So let's have a look at that. You will find the there's various options actually for gate in Audition across the Adobe Creative Cloud. But I'm going to use the one that you find on Dynamics because it's got the most essential and industry standard parameters on it. So it's very easy to understand. So I'm going to head for Amplitude and Compression and Dynamics. And this is what you see. Dynamics is a great tool because it's actually got an auto gate, a gate, a compressor and an expander and a limiter all on one plugin. I'm only going to be talking about gate today. To switch these processors on and off, you click in the box. Okay, we want to switch the gate on. So let's go through some of these controls. Well, all of these controls to be precise. <laughs> I've only got four with the gate, very handy. Some gates will have more than this, but these are the four most essential controls to make a gate work. And what we have here is a threshold. And a threshold is a level that the signal must reach before the gate even thinks about opening. All right, so anything below that threshold, so at the moment below 20 decibels below zero, minus 20, will not be strong enough to open the gate. So if the signal's at minus 21, the gate will remain closed. If it goes up to minus 19, the gate will open. Then we've got attack, which is how quickly the gate will open. So at the moment we've got one millisecond, it's pretty much instant. And you can probably take it down to, yeah, 0.1 is the lowest. Generally, you want the gate to open as quickly as possible so that you don't miss anything. Because if the gate opens slowly, like this, impactful sounds particularly could end up sounding more, instead of like bang, bang, sound like wang, wang. All right, so we don't want it too slow opening. But you do find that if the gate opens too quickly, you kind of perceive this clicking sound, like it jumps in, and it's quite noticeable. So one or two milliseconds is, is probably the best thing to have it on. Just try it out and use your ears. If you get in this kind of jumpy, clicky sound, then just increase the attack level. In other words, slow it down, slow down the attack. And that should get rid of that. If you go too far, then you'll end up with that kind of cutting off of the sound, the impactful sound coming through. So depending on what kind of sound you are gating, and this will be more important if you're like gating to like a piano, so you've got the hammer on sound or drums or something, or an explosion or a door slam, then really you want that attack as quick as possible. But with dialogue, you can get away maybe with a few more milliseconds on the attack. I'm going to leave it on one millisecond for now and see what happens. Release is the opposite to attack, and it's how quickly the gate closes after signal falls below threshold. So basically, as soon as a signal falls below minus 20, the gate will think about closing, but it's going to take 100 milliseconds to actually close the gate. So it will start closing straight away, and over 100 milliseconds it will close shut. All right, now this is slightly different to hold, which is where you actually state how long you want the gate to stay wide open. All right, now at the moment it's on one millisecond. I find using a combination of attack and release is sufficient, particularly for dialogue, but you might find that the gate is just closing too quickly and you want to give it a few milliseconds where the gate definitely stays open regardless falling below threshold. These are your controls and the only graphic representation you get in this particular instant is a green light here for open, a orange light for in the process of opening and closing and a red light for closed. So let's have a little look and do a bit of analysis because what's left in the signal now after applying that noise reduction is that we're peaking around about minus eight the sum of this dialogue is as low as minus 18. 
Yeah, at minus 18. I think uh, there was some even lower at the start. I'm not sure that little peak there is part of it. If so, then we're looking at more like um, sort of minus 24. But we've also got this bird squawk here. And a couple of other things are peaking around at minus 24 as well. So we don't really want to go down to minus 24. Or they'll get picked up. I'm going to try around about minus 22. Going to have one millisecond. So it's going to be a quick attack. So the gate's going to open very quickly. I'll come back to the release and just try that as we're running. And then I'm going to play. And we got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Right, interestingly, I don't really heard there, but in this, it's underneath the recording, but this bit here, a couple of the bits of wind noise actually came through still. So, to um, counteract that, we're going to have to raise the threshold slightly. Can you also hear the dialogue is sounding a bit artificial? It sounded like he's alright because the, the gate is closing too soon and not allowing the kind of nuances and the tone of the dialogue to come through before the gate closes. You've got to get the balance right because if you have the gate open too long, it'll pick up the next bit of noise. So I'm going to reduce that slightly. Let's type it in so we're more precise than minus 21. There we go, minus 21. I'm going to increase this to 300 milliseconds. Okay, so it's a slower release on the gate. And let's see what happens now. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I... I Right, so there's still a little bit of noise coming through. I'm going to raise this to minus 20. I don't really want to lose the dialogue, though, so I might have to try some other little techniques to address this, because those bits of noise are particularly significant still. You can see now why it was applying EQ or noise reduction first, because if I'd left that alone, that noise would have been far too loud for a gate to be effective at all. It's also standing still a little bit snappy. It's still closing too quickly. I'm going to raise this now to... I'm going to compromise, go 375 milliseconds, see what that sounds like. I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us. Those flipping sounds still coming through. Huh. Right, to be honest, if I bring this up much higher I'm going to end up probably losing too much of the nuances I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat here it's going to reduce the impact of these bits it's easy enough to do when it's so obvious and it will mean that on the gate I can actually take that back down now to slightly lower threshold I should end up with and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us, and he got the others. And that's about as good as it's going to get. There is a little bit of noise, which gets very prominent around here. It's where the wind rumble starts behind the dialogue and that's coming up but to be honest if I you know produces and put a little bit of music underneath it or something or some ambient sound it's going to more or less disappear in the mix it's about as good as it's going to get this was an extreme example with a lot of noise essentially if your dialogue ends up like this go back and record it again <laughs> all right think about your location think about your equipment your mic positioning all that jazz and go and get better dialogue or go and do dialogue replacement in the studio and use an ambient mild track. 
really dealing with this this level of noise and dialogue is not industry standard no professional will entertain it it's a fantastic example to just show how these processes work though so this is as good as it's going to get as far as i can work out let's just switch off the auto gates so you can hear the difference i don't think i, I can make it back uh, i'm in the middle of nowhere the dog found us and he got the others um, I don't think I, I can make it back. Uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The dog found us and he got the others. There we go. That's how you apply a gate. Very useful in music, by the way, for mixing drums and getting separation between drums as well. So it's worth looking to that if you're into that sort of thing. But thank you for watching. Hope that was useful to you. I'll catch up with you again soon.